Uh, hello, everyone. I am in the best possible position standing between you and lunch. Uh, so thank you all so much for coming. Uh, today I want to talk to you about the various ways in which we've invested uh, in running HashiCorp Vault on GCP over the past uh, year and a half to two years. Um, this is a kind of high-level introductory talk. I will be doing some live demos, uh, but we're not going to really be getting deep on any one topic. So this is more of an overview of some of the ways that we've made investments in the past year and a half to two years. Uh, like Mano said, my name is Seth. I work on the developer relations team here at Google. My Twitter handle is Seth Vargo. Uh, if you have questions, comments, complaints, or concerns, um, you can tweet at me. Uh, please don't complain. Um, but otherwise, fine. Uh, if you have questions that you don't feel comfortable asking publicly, my direct messages are also open. So you can feel free to send me a direct message. Cool. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I want to provide a quick overview of what is Vault for those of you that might not be aware. Uh, and then we'll jump into some of the GCP specific things that we've been working on. So in order to talk about Vault, it's important to talk about what is a secret. Uh, when we talk about a secret, we're specifically talking about anything that can be used to authorize or authenticate. So that might be a username and password, an API token, a TLS certificate. Um, but it also might be something that's uh, personally identifiable or business intelligence data, like a social security uh, number, a credit card, a passport number, the API key to access your internal analytics dashboards that give you a competitive advantage in your market. And given this problem, and given that secrets are a common attack vector, because they often have overly broad access, or they access critical systems data, we often ask questions like, how do our applications get secrets? How do humans get secrets? How are secrets updated? How are they revoked? Who is using this secret right now? Why are they using it? When are they done with it? And what do we do in a compromise? Because as much as we would like to protect our secrets and make sure that no one ever has access to them, at some point, we have to accept the reality that an attacker is going to exploit a vulnerability in our software or in our humans, and they're going to get access to our secrets. So we need a plan for rotation, and we need a plan for revocation. What is the worst case scenario? How quickly can we recover? So what is our mean time to patch a CVE? What is our mean time to recovery in case of a leak? So Vault is an open source tool. It's written in Go, so it's free and open source that is designed to answer these questions and many more. Uh, it tries to be a single source of secrets for your organization. It provides programmatic access so that uh, machines and humans can access the API. But it also has a CLI and a UI for human access. So humans can interact with the API or the UI. And then machines or other applications and services can interact with the API directly. And it's important that, to note that it's cloud friendly. So Vault doesn't require that you have some special hardware or some special hardware device attached to a physical machine. This runs on you know, native uh, VMs and any cloud provider, including GCP. So it's very cloud friendly, uh, works very well in the cloud ecosystem. You can even run it in a container. Vault, stores all of its, uh, Vault encrypts all of its data in transit using TLS 1.2 or most recently 1.3 for client authentication. The data is encrypted at rest with 256-bit AES-GCM encryption. And it offers a hierarchical key value store for storing data. So it's a path-based approach to storing data. And the data inside a secret is a key value pair. One of the things that's really interesting about Vault is that it offers dynamic secrets. So in a traditional world, uh, let's say I need a database username and password to connect to my MySQL instance. Well, an operator has to provision that credential by running you know, create user in the SQL command. And then they take that username and password, and they put it in a text file to give it to the application. With Vault, Vault can actually run that SQL for you and provision that user automatically. So a human never sees the credential. Only the end application sees the credential. And this helps you maintain provenance, a one-to-one -one mapping between a credential and the application or service that's consuming it. This gives us a really tight audit trail, uh, and it allows us to time bound our credentials. So instead of having a human create a credential that lives forever, we can have a machine create a credential that's valid for 24 hours, or a week, or a month. And by auto expiring these credentials, we reduce our surface area for an attack. We reduce the number of credentials, and we reduce secret sprawl. 
And more importantly, we can revoke any of those credentials at any time in the event of a data breach. Humans or machines authenticate to Vault by providing uh, some type of credential. Vault then goes to these third-party databases, things like Redis, MySQL, Postgres, or as we'll see in a bit, Google Cloud, and dynamically generate credentials on the fly and return them to the requester. Each time someone requests a credential, they get a brand new unique credential. And Vault is pluggable. So I already mentioned like Postgres, My, uh, MySQL, Postgres, et cetera. Basically any SQL database, including Oracle and MongoDB and SQL Server are supported for the database side of things. There's also cloud provider support. So at Google, uh, we have full-time engineers who are contributing support to Vault. There's also plugins for other clouds for your multi-cloud strategy, like AWS or Azure or Oracle In or VMware. Class. But then there are other systems that we, that we don't think of when we talk about secrets, but things like RabbitMQ, how do you get that API key out there? Things like uh, SSH access, how do you maintain the ability for people to SSH into systems? Things like managing uh, TLS certificates, running your own PKI infrastructure. Vault can actually act as a certificate authority or an intermediate certificate authority providing TLS or mutual TLS authentications between your microservices. It obviously integrates really well with other tools in the HashiCorp ecosystem, uh, and most recently, you can also use it to provision Active Directory users, as well as OpenID per Connect providers. So what are some ways that you can use Vault with GCP? So we've made a few key investments and a few areas uh, that allow you, as Google Cloud customers and Google Cloud consumers, to gain the benefits of running Vault as an open source product on GCP while leveraging other GCP tools and technologies. And the first one I want to talk about is storage backends. So Vault itself is actually a stateless service. It instead has pluggable storage backends. Storage backend is just where Vault puts its data. The easiest one to think about is the file system. Vault is just going to write its data to the file system. It also has an in-memory implementation where it'll store all of its data in memory, and when you stop the process, all of that data is lost. It's great for local development. But in production, how could you run Vault? against a storage backend that's highly available, provides high availability, high durability, uh, but also is low maintenance, right? Ideally, you don't want to carry a pager just for your storage backend. So we made some key investments on GCP. The first storage backend, which is probably the most common among our customers, is the Google Cloud Storage, or the GCS storage backend. This is a GCP native storage backend. You create a Google Cloud Storage bucket. You grant Vault, or a service account running Vault, permission to read and write data from that storage bucket. That'll give you three and a half nines of availability. You don't have to carry the pager. We carry that pager for you. And it allows you to run Vault in high availability mode. So this allows you to run multiple Vault instances uh, in high availability mode for you. Another storage backend we offer for our enterprise customers or for customers who need a little bit more availability is our Google Cloud Spanner storage backend. Google Cloud Spanner is GCP native. It gives you five nines of avail availability in the highest configuration. Also supports Vault's high availability mode. It also supports Vault Enterprise. Uh, if you're running HashCorp's proprietary uh, enterprise offering, it's supported on Spanner, but not GCS, um, because of the way that Vault Enterprise requires a transactional interface. Again, both of these storage backends support high availability. Both of these storage backends are available with zero maintenance to you. Google carries the pager. And the slides that I'm showing you here are exactly how easy it is to add this configuration to your Vault server config. It's just three or four lines of configuration uh, and the IAM authentication. And now you're using a Google Cloud supported storage backend. Both of these storage backends were contributed by Google engineers to Vault Core. They're available in the Vault open source distribution. You don't need to install a plugin or run any sidecar applications. You can download Vault today or really any of the recent versions of Vault. These configuration stanzas will work out of the box. They also support GCP native default application credentials. That means if you're running Vault on a Google Compute Engine instance, a Google Container Engine instance, or Google Kubernetes Engine instance, Cloud Run, Cloud Functions, anything that supports instance metadata, you can attach a service account to that VM or that underlying runtime and it will automatically authenticate. So you don't have to worry about passing around a service account. So those are the storage backends. 
Now let's talk about Secrets Engines. So in Vault, Secrets Engines are pluggable systems that allow us to extend Vault's functionality. And there are two Secrets Engines that I want to talk to you about today that can really help accelerate the way that you do security with GCP. The first is our IAM Secrets Engine. So this is our Google Cloud Identity and Access Management Vault Secrets Engine plugin. It's a mouthful. What this allows us to do is to configure Vault to generate OAuth2 access tokens for provisioning access to Google Cloud. So what I do is I configure Vault with a service account and some permissions, and then I say, hey Vault, I would like you to generate service accounts or OAuth2 tokens for me whenever someone interacts with this path. What Vault is going to do is it's then going to make uh, various API calls to Google Cloud, and it will generate an OAuth2 access token, which expires in a certain amount of time, in this example, 60 minutes. So this is an OAuth2 access token that you can use to sign and authenticate requests to Google Cloud. And they're automatically cleaned up after that 60 minutes expires. Unless you write this yourself, Vault is actually the only way today to have time-based GCP IAM credentials that automatically expire. This allows you to provide automated, short-term access to your various Google resources with very little overhead. So you imagine you have some batch process that needs to get some information from a cloud storage bucket, decrypt it with cloud KMS, run some data, and store the results somewhere. You can leverage a storage backend like, or a secrets engine like this to generate those credentials for you that automatically expire whenever the job expires. So you don't have to worry about leaking those credentials or having a long running service account with permissions. The next secrets engine, which is one of our newest secrets engine, is the Google Cloud KMS secrets engine. This secrets engine is an abstraction on top of Google Cloud KMS, our key management service. The Google Cloud KMS secrets engine allows you to create, manage, delete, update, encrypt, decrypt, sign, verify, all kinds of data through Vault's API. Now, you could do this by using the Google Cloud KMS API directly. All of the functionality that we expose in the plugin is also available via the API or the UI directly. But we have a lot of customers who are already heavily invested in Vault, and they wanted to use the same interface, the same policies, the same authentication that they're already using for their multi-cloud strategy or their hybrid cloud strategy, but they want to leverage Google Cloud KMS. And this plugin is a way that you can do that. The coolest part about this plugin, though, is that it actually allows you to encrypt and decrypt data backed by a hardware security module, an HSM. And this is exposed via the Google Cloud KMS APIs. So just by reading and writing from a JSON REST endpoint, you can actually have your data be encrypted and decrypted by a physical hardware security module uh, up to FIPS 142 level three if you have those regulatory requirements. So again, this is GCP native, integrates with Cloud HSM. You can manage your keys using Vault. You can use your existing policies and configurations in Vault. And you can encrypt, sign, verify, decrypt data using the Vault API. So instead of just showing you this on a slide, I figured I'd show you what this looks like. So with that, we'll jump over to the live demo. So I have a Vault server here already set up. It's running on Google Kubernetes Engine. And I'm just going to go ahead and run Vault read uh, GCP token dev token. And what this is going to do uh, in real time, this is very real you would theoretically uh, be able to use that token for the next 60 minutes if I don't revoke it by the end of this talk. This will give you access to this project. You can't actually do anything in the project. But uh, this is real. Every time I run this command, I'll actually get a new uh, Google Cloud access token. This is an access token that I can authenticate to the API with. It is an OAuth2 bearer token. And I can give this to any of the Google Cloud client libraries or any uh, service account or any type of officially supported tool. And it will authenticate. Uh, as this user and be able to access the APIs, uh, the permissions as dictated by IAM. So that's actually just how easy it is to generate these tokens. And again, they automatically expire after 60 minutes. I've already configured the uh, GCP KMS plugin, and I'm going to save some typing by copying it to my clipboard. So <clears throat> here I'm using the Vault API to encrypt and decrypt data using the Google Cloud KMS managed keys. So all I do is I ask uh, Vault to encrypt some data. In this case, I gave it the plain text high. 
and Vault gives me back some encrypted ciphertext. From here, I can also create new keys, rotate keys, upgrade keys, and even delete keys, all using Vault's API. Under the hood, that's backed by Google Cloud KMS and Google Cloud HSM, but it's abstracted for you at the API layer. So all of these secrets engines are developed by Google as plugins. So they are third-party plugins, but they're bundled automatically in all Vault open source distributions. So even though they're uh, developed third-party plugins, they're included in Vault's distribution, which means you don't have to download or install them on your own. If you download any recent version of Vault, they'll be available for you. And as I said before, just like the storage backends, these secrets engines support the Google Cloud application default credentials, which means you don't have to worry about passing around service accounts if you're on a Google managed VM or something with instance metadata. So the last thing I want to talk about is auth methods. <clears throat> so we've talked about how you can run Vault on GCP. We've talked about how you can provision accounts and interact with KMS. But if I'm a Google Cloud user, maybe I'm a G Suite user, Google Cloud user, I have these service accounts, how do my humans or my applications authenticate to Vault using GCP? In other words, can I leverage GCP as my source of trust for uh, <clears throat> my underlying authentication? And we can. We actually have the Google Cloud auth method. <clears throat> in Vault, an auth method is the way in which we convert uh, human or machine supplied information into an authentication credential. And this is what it looks like. We can log into Vault using the GCP method with a particular role, a service account, and the underlying service account credentials. Vault will authenticate this against the Google Cloud IAM APIs, and it will give me back a Vault session, a Vault token, if you will. And this allows me to then interact with Vault, given any pre-configured policies that my security team uh, might have created in advance. So this is GCP native. It, it allows you to authenticate with IAM service accounts or GCE instance metadata. So you can actually authenticate to Vault just because you are an instance in GCE or anything that has instance metadata. <clears throat> And it has support for uh, Vault group aliases and policy management, which is really important if you're running Vault Enterprise and you want to use namespaces. So very quickly, let me show you what this looks like. It's thinking. So it does take a little bit longer because uh, we have to make a few different API calls to authenticate the request. But what I did here is I gave Vault my uh, credential uh, as well as the service account that I'm authenticating with and the role in which I'm authenticating. And Vault gives me back a token. That token has some policies. So I basically get a session with policies attached that were configured and managed by my security team. So I just authenticate to Vault using my existing Google Cloud credentials. So this is a great way to kind of trust Vault as kind of the source of truth for secrets, but then leverage the identity bits to Google Cloud. <clears throat> on Google Kubernetes Engine or any Kubernetes cluster, we also have the Kubernetes auth method. Now, this is not something that Google engineers have specifically developed. We've partnered with a number of folks, including folks at HashiCorp, to write the Kubernetes auth method. But this is a way to authenticate pods and services in Kubernetes Engine using Vault. This is GCP agnostic. It allows you to restrict access via RBAC permissions and various uh, <clears throat> Kubernetes service accounts. You can restrict access by Kubernetes namespaces. And it works great on GKE, because GKE is just Kubernetes. But this also works uh, if you have GKE on-prem with Anthos, if you have your own AKS cluster or EKS cluster. Because this is Kubernetes native, it'll work on all of those as well. So these auth methods are developed as plugins that are, uh, some of them are maintained and contributed by Google, en Google engineers. They are also bundled in the open source distribution of Vault. So again, you don't have to worry about installing them yourselves. They just have a separate development velocity than Vault Core. And they help solve that first secret problem. How do I authenticate to Vault without like, hard coding your credentials somewhere? How does all of this work? So these auth methods help you do that, do that by delegating trust to either the cloud platform or the Kubernetes API server. So I have a few links. If you're going to take a picture of a slide, this is the one to take a picture of. There are a few things here that are really important. The Cloud Spanner and the Cloud Storage backends are heavily documented, as well as all of our secret engines, including all of our auth methods. So everything I've talked about here today is on this slide, except the last one. Um, and I have one minute left, so I'm actually going to show it to you. So the Vault Fluent D configurations 
allow us to abstract vault audit logs and system logs into Stackdriver in a really friendly way. And I'm glad I have an extra minute because this is just really cool to me. So I'm going to go ahead and jump over here into the Google Cloud Console and make this a little bit bigger. I've configured this in advance. I've configured this in advance. So again, I'm running Vault on GCE VMs in this case. And you'll notice if I click on this little dropdown, I have two tags, Vault Project IO Audit and Vault Project IO Server. The audit logs are actually Vault's audit logs. Vault audits every uh, request and response in the system. And the server logs are just the operational logs, what you would expect to see from kind of any microservice or any long running service. I'm going to go ahead and filter by the audit logs here. Here are audit logs where, and this is directly using that Fluent D configuration. I have my IP address, the alias ID of the credential, the API method I used, and the path that I accessed. And right inside Stackdriver, I can actually drill down into the direct request and response headers in the JSON payload. This is structured, this is available, and I can actually filter directly on some of this data. So if I just want to click Show Matching Entries, I can see all of the requests that that particular token made right from inside Stackdriver. Uh, and this is not Vault specific, uh, but this is, uh, those Fluent D configurations allow the audit logs to be parsed in a way that Stackdriver exposes this functionality to you. That's all I have for you here today. Thank you all so very much. I'll be available for questions outside of the dev zone. Thank you.